Last year, LSU reigned supreme in college football. Benson breaks it across the line of scrimmage. He's gonna go! It's a foot race, 40, 35, 30. Margin. He's streaking down the far sidelines. He scores! Three, two, one. Tigers are the national champions! Defending your honor brings new pressures, and LSU was tested early. Soars behind a high-powered caddy. Handoff to Williams. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Today, two nationally ranked teams share similar goals. For LSU, there is a quest to repeat as national champions. And for Auburn, they look to prove there is more than one Tiger on the prowl in the SEC. brought devastation to the Gulf States Thursday. The only football was played in the puddle. Auburn took their game day Tiger walk through campus today. Oh, the sun is out, and so are the Auburn and LSU tailgaters. The party is on. It is time for SEC football. And it's time now for the Auburn Tigers. comes another Tiger from Baton Rouge, LSU. Welcome to SEC football here on CBS. Double header day, and we start with fourth ranked and defending co national champion LSU against 15th ranked Auburn. And hi, everybody. I'm Craig Buller Jack, along with Randy Cross. So good to have you in the booth. LSU, as we know, co national champions. The other half of that title belongs to USC. And Nick Statement told us straight up hey, this can be another good football team if. My players accept the roles, Randy. Well, the number one role, we got to find out who's playing who, is at quarterback. You've got Marcus Randall and Jamarcus Russell, who's a redshirt freshman. The leader, Randall. Senior, here's the Argent quarterback comparison. Numbers-wise, no comparison. In a perfect world for Nick Saban and the LSU Tigers, in the SEC opener, the leader is identified, the starter is identified. And we talk about that LSU defense. We know they're good. They're solid. They'll have to be rock solid, however, as this offense finds their way throughout the season. Well, this is the defense, Craig, that can score. Marcus Spears up front. He and the whole front seven like to play in the other team's backfield. And that sets up guys like Corey Webster on the outside to take chances and go for picks to take them back the other way. Now, Auburn unveiled a new offense a couple of weeks ago. They have a new offensive coordinator. And, Randy, what a ground game they have. Well, Al Borges is that coordinator and so far they've thrown 35 passes that tells you when you're talking about running backs you've got Carnell Williams the Cadillac who can run as good as anybody in the country and no team has a one two crunch like he and Ronnie Brown I mean good running game to me that means good play action down the field and that's the heart and soul of that pro style offense a lot of people have asked how much rain has this uh, field taken since Hurricane Ivan came over on Thursday with the answer here's Dwayne Ballant 
and four to six inches of rain fell here on the field at Jordan Hare Stadium, but it's a field that has a crown on it. It drains perfectly, so the field is absolutely dry. Sunny skies, ideal conditions for both sets of Tigers. All right, Dwayne, the temperature is perfect. 81 degrees, Randy. Wind will not play a factor. 15 to 20 miles an hour in the forecast. Oh, what two days make sunny, sunny skies, as you can see over Jordan Air Stadium today in Auburn. You know, Craig, early on, the sun's going to be a factor to anything thrown in the far left corner. There's Tommy Tuberville, sixth year at Auburn, celebrating his 50th birthday today. Never lost on the big day. And knocked off LSU back in 1999, 41-7. There's Nick Saban, fifth year at LSU. They were 13-1 a year ago, beat Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl to claim part of that national championship. Auburn won the toss. So LSU will go right to left, and they've decided, Auburn that is, to defend to start this game. Both clubs 2-0, and oh, and we're underway in Auburn. Xavier Carter, no chance. And so LSU will start on their own 20-yard line. And the quarterback, the senior Randy, Marcus Randall, will start, but will share time with the redshirt freshman, Jamarcus Russell. 4-4. Four and four in his career as a starter at LSU. Skyler Green does start, who's had some problems with a high ankle sprain. And here is Justin Vincent, the five sophomore running back who had 1,000 yards as a freshman. And here's the starting lineups brought to you by Ballpark Franks. And up front for LSU, it is anchored by the senior center and Ben Wilkerson. Vincent, as I mentioned, a 1,000-yard rusher a year ago, and there was question up until game time, Randy, whether or not Skyler Green, the junior, an explosive wide receiver, would play. He's on the field. He was limping noticeably in warm-up, so Craig. Randall. Rolls out in troubles, pointing for help. Still on his feet at the 30, and a first down at around the 31-yard line. Carlos Rogers makes the tackle, a pickup of five. And let's set that defense for you for Auburn. Lost some big players from a year ago. Carlos Dansby, along with uh, Reggie Torbor, Ratliff, moves over from defensive end to defensive tackle. The linebackers are Sears, and the two Williams in the secondary. Pitts, Rose Green, Herring, and Rogers. Carlos Rogers with five career interceptions. Three wide receivers set. Randall on the run. Big yards up to around the 40-yard line. First down is going to be absolutely critical for this Auburn defense. If you're unsure about your quarterback position, as they call it down here, you want to get them behind the sticks. You want to get them down on first down. You want to start making these second and third down calls more difficult. If you start piling in five, six, seven yards on first down, you're playing right into the LSU, off, LSU Tigers' hands. Second down and two after a pickup of eight. Randall, as you see, has the ability, Randy, to scramble out of the pocket while the redshirt freshman, Jamarcus Russell, more of a drop back, strong armed passer. That time, Benson weaves for a couple, maybe to the 44-yard line. Travis Williams with the tackle. Two-year letterman out of Columbia, South Carolina. Well, you know it's Justin Vincent's job to come in here and make him the best running back, make himself the best running back on the field today. If he can do that for LSU, that, that is what they call best-case scenario. Takes the crowd out of it and puts the defense in some bad spots. Vincent takes an early breather, and Joseph Adai, a junior from Houston, checks in that LSU backfield. He'll get the call on the carry, skips for a couple of yards. He'll mark it down, Randy, at the 47, a pick up a three. Now, wouldn't you say, Craig, watching the first couple games for both these teams, you know, this is the early test. Yes. And especially for the defense of Auburn, they haven't faced an offense that will stick on you. 
and, and will block the way that LSU's front five will block them. They're going to be tested there, and they're going to be tested coverage-wise down the field. Now, Randall may not be a great passer. Russell, the backup, is an excellent thrower of the ball. Five plays, five runs. This time, though, he skips out of trouble. I don't know if that was a busted play. He had a four-wide receiver set and threw it away. I, I think that was what that was. Gene Chiswick, the defensive coordinator of Auburn, talks about attacking this offense. That was them attacking the offense on the outside with a blitz, just humming from the quarterback's left. See, Randall doesn't really have any time to, to think about it. They're vicing, squeezing him from the outside. He just got to try a desperation jump pass, and now you've got him in the down and distance mode. You want this offense in. Three wide receivers set, two set to the near side. On third down, Randall guns it in traffic. It's pulled down by the tight end, David Jones. First down, LSU inside the 35-yard line. Montavious Pitts and Rose Green teamed up to make the stop after a gain of 19. 19 yards there, and you got to say, that's all on Marcus Randall. Watch the follow-through. Looks like a baseball pitcher. Follows that ball all the way down to his receiver and puts it low outside, exactly where the linebacker, Travis Williams, couldn't get to it, and his tight end could. His second catch of the season is David Jones, a junior out of Silver Springs, Maryland. Vincent has checked back in, and that backfield now an eye formation on first down at the Auburn 34-yard line. Vincent goes outside, Little's hopping a skip inside the 30, Randy, to the 29-yard line. Vincent, not a big back per se at 5'10", 213, but he loved the contact. Right, and and for, a, for a head coach like Nick Saban, he's a lot like his buddy Bill Belichick up with the New England Patriots. They love offensively to get some early numbers on you, to get their defense on the field, which is very aggressive, gives you a lot of exotic looks. It puts all the pressure on the other team's offense after his offense performs. Vincent so far, three carries, 16 yards. Again from the eye, second down, call it four. Opening drive for LSU on the road. Three-step drop, incomplete. Short on the throw from Randall to Craig Davis. So far, this LSU offense has been potent through the first two games, Randy. 37 and a half points a game. They scored uh, in that overtime win against Oregon State, 22, and last week put 53 up against Arkansas State. Well, that football team spent the better part of that Oregon State opener down there in Baton Rouge on their heels. They were lucky to come out with a win there, but they rallied pretty nice last week, getting a little rhythm and continuity to the offense. A die in the backfield as Randall goes shotgun on third down. Tenth play of this drive. Randall to the far sideline, near sideline, down the sideline. They're going to mark him out of bounds. That's Davis who made a incredible catch but did step out after a pickup of 12 at the 17. That's a nice job. You're clearing out with one receiver. The other receiver's in position to give a nice little block. That's good game planning. Very good game plan, and he just stepped out about that second step when he cut for the sideline on the 17-yard line. Davis had four catches last week for 73 yards against Arkansas State. Double tight end set for LSU, first and 10. Well, the pads pop as a die is stood up at the 14 by Travis Williams. His second tackle of the afternoon, and this drive continues, and they are closing in on five minutes so far in this opening quarter. Right early on, you got to look inside at the at the Auburn defense to people, you know, like Jason Th Jason Thompson and T.J. Johnson Jackson at the nose tackle position. They're being controlled inside a little bit and they're controlling the line of scrimmage are the LSU Tigers. That's a difference so far from what we've seen on tape coming in. Again, double tight set. A die is the back. Play action. Randall sets, throws to the flat. Nice catch. Oh, a chop. On the takedown by David Jones. Nice catch is Donye Young. Made a big hit on those thigh pads after a four-yard pickup. But it was nice poised by Randall. He turned around off that fake and got a face full of linebacker about three, four yards away who, instead of coming, was going to block and 
jump and block the pass. Most defensive players, you, you get off the ground, you're right where a quarterback wants you. And if you stop, you're exactly where he wants you. 12 plays, 70 yards. You look at Randall's numbers, three of five. A die in the backfield. Two wide receivers set, third down, call it two. Around the corner comes Davis, first down, Will Harry. The safety stuck his helmet on Davis and brought him down. First down, and it will be goal to goal. Nice timing, good coordination on the outside with the blocks. And then Davis sort of accepts the fate and turns inside and does a nice job. But Auburn's defense doesn't get a square hit and doesn't get a good solid smack on the flanker coming around on the inside handoff. Ella Dye and Vincent, Randy have been trading spots in that backfield keeping fresh legs in for LSU first and goal Vincent back in and there's movement and flags the referee today Steve Landis for the snap, for the snap. Ball start number 89. that was Keith Zinger number 89 a sophomore from Louisville Louisiana and when you're on the road in this conference, Nick Saban knows very well your offense has got to co concentrate just a little bit harder because you know it's the loudest point on the field in either one of these end zone situations. David Jones lines up as a fullback. Play action, Randall, good protection. Up and over the middle. Touchdown, LSU, Dwayne Bowe. Impressive opening drive, and Randy, you mentioned it earlier, great poise by the senior Marcus Randall. And, and he's just working, and he knows and has face and bows that against Kevin Sears, he can get that quick break, and he fed that one right in there between the safety and the corner. That was absolutely perfectly thrown. Extra point, no good. Remember that after that incredible 14 play drive, they go 80 yards and Godet misses the extra point. Bo with his fourth touchdown catch of the season. LSU up 6 0. LSU by six, a touchdown catch by Bo, but the extra point was missed. 14 plays that go 80 yards. Randall, very impressive on that opening drive, connecting on four of six after five straight running plays to start things. Here, Bo and Hobbs, watch the matchup and the quick break, but the accuracy of the throw, getting this ball to Bo before a safety or anybody else can get in the way. Gotta love the poise, love the accuracy, and that's one of the nice things about having a, a senior starter in a hostile environment for the calm. High, high kick. Aroma Shudu pushes his way to the 19 yard line. Let's take a look now at the ballpark Franks lineup after the return of 13. There's the senior, Jason Campbell, making his 22nd consecutive start. And Randy's been impressive as a starter here at Auburn. 20 and 9 career. So when you talk to the kid in person, you're even more impressed, now, not only by his poise and his size, but you can see what a great leader he is here for this offense, because he brings, much like we saw from Randall, a certain calm to his offensive team, especially in stressful situations like this. Now they load up the backfield and split out. Carnell Williams, who says, I don't mind that nickname Cadillac at all, will get the first carry. Tough yards, but he is so tough after the initial hit, and he plows his way up to the 25. A pickup of five. Jesse Daniels makes the stop. Now let's set that Auburn offense for you. That offensive line, they will rotate a lot of players in to keep everybody fresh. And this anchor there by the center, Jeremy Engel. Talented core of wide receivers and in the backfield. Carnell Cadillac Williams. And boy, he can break it with 4-4 four, four speed. Second down five as Campbell pedals, sets, throws. 
Well, those pads, Carnell. The Cadillac just busted his front bumper. Lionel Turner said hello. Put him in the, put him in the shop. And defensively for LSU, giving up only 12 points for the first two games of the season. On average, Spears anchors on that left defensive end spot, says, hey, it's my team. I'm going to put my mark on it. Lionel Turner, a very good linebacker in the middle, is a fifth-year senior. And the secondary of Webster, Landry, and the two Daniels. A loss of five, third down ten. Campbell up and over, in traffic, caught Courtney Taylor. Oh, did Campbell put that ball in traffic between Laron Landry and company, a pickup of 17. Sometimes it's a, it's a beautiful catch, sometimes it's a wonderful throw, and other times, folks, it's just self-defense. Because if you don't catch this ball, this one's gonna hurt you. Because it is perfectly squeezed in, and offensive coordinator Al Borges commented about the accuracy of Campbell. He also commented on the different formations and motions you're gonna see out of this offense. So far, we've seen something different on every play. Multiple sets is right. Here comes the Cadillac. Lowers his pads to the 44-yard line. For a West Virginia, Maryland update, back to our New York studios, and here's Tim. All right, Craig, uh, you don't think West Virginia knows they need to win a game? This is an overtime. Rasheed Marshall to Chris Henry, seven yards. They're going to cruise in the Big East. They may not lose a game. And that the goalposts come down against the fourth-best team in the ACC. Also, Georgia has beaten Marshall. Back to Craig. Jimmy, thanks. I tell you, those goalposts are not cheap, mind you, for that athletic department. There's nothing cheap about this NCAA football. Four wide receivers. Ronnie Brown, by the way, comes in, lines up on the slot. They throw outside. Brown, watch out! Breaks the tackle out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Landry made the hit. Check that Carnell. 19-yard pickup. Well, we're seeing the multiple looks. They had Carnell at halfback and Brown on the outside as a receiver. There you've got Cadillac in the slot, and that's just pure Cadillac after the first three yards. That's just running ability, and that's usually what you see out of his running mate, Ronnie Brown, that run after contact, the yards after contact. A senior, first down, Auburn at the LSU 39-yard line. Little pitch out, Williams, nice patience, throws the stiff arm as he try to let his offensive line spread that LSU front. They'll bump him out around the 30, call it the 35, 36 yard line. You know, they refer to this offense that Al Borges brought here as a West Coast offense. I want to make a point early. Yeah, and, and start this, because you, you disagree. The West Coast offense is in a locker or up, up well, on a... It's a museum piece. It, yes, it is. The original West Coast offense is a museum piece, and folks, it does not exist. This is a multiple offense, a pro-style offense, a lot of formations, a lot of motions predicated on getting the ball to receivers that can do with it something with it after they catch it. That simple. Taylor, the motion man, on second down. The throw, nice grab, right on the hands of Obamanu at the 22-yard line. Turner and Landry made the tackle, and so far, both teams able to move up and down the field at will, a 14-yard pickup. Now Borges just brought up the example of, of what Tampa Bay is doing in the pros, what Washington's doing in the pros, and basically Joe Gibbs dusted off his own game plans and is doing it again. That's what he's bringing in here. A lot of formations, a lot of motions. There's Al right there in the middle. Just that he's studying that sheet because he's getting some nice matchups he can exploit later. Anthony Mix in motion. Toss out. Here comes Ronnie Brown. Cuts back inside to the 19-yard line. And for a Vandy Ole Miss update, we go back to New York and here's Tim. All right, Craig, it's been uh, 13 straight on the road for Vanderbilt in the SEC that they've lost. And here, Jonathan Nichols, after missing a 50-yarder in regulation, connects from 35 at Vaught Hemingway. 14 consecutive SEC losses on the road for Vandy. Ole Miss gets their first win of the year. Craig? 26-23, Ole Miss in OT. Things did not look well for Ole Miss early. Here in Auburn, 
LSU up by six after a touchdown to Bow and a mixed extra point. But Auburn on the drive, second down six, under four and a half minutes to play. Pressure, they throw to the flat ball tip. It was intended for Ronnie Brown. Pressure, pressure by Ronnie Prude. Jason Campbell was in was in full reverse, trying to get a little touch on that pass. And if he'd have got it to Ronnie Brown, there's only two defenders right there. It's a matter of Brown making those guys miss. He had one blocker out in front of him. It's just the timing was ruined by that uh, by that rush. First incomplete. And 405 now throwing for 44 yards for Campbell. Williams and Brown both in the Auburn backfield. Third down six. And now a timeout called by Campbell. We'll take a break. 416 left opening quarter. LSU on the road by six. Keep going. Welcome back, Jordan Air Stadium, 65th year. 87,000, maybe 88. They have packed it in. LSU's drive went 14 plays, Randy. This is the 10th play of the opening drive for Auburn. Third down, long snap count by Campbell. Three-step drop, throws again in traffic, caught. Boy, Courtney Taylor, he would not be denied at trying to run out of the tackle of Travis Daniels, a pickup of eight. Part of the reason you use all this motion and you get you want to get the defenders in strange places that opens up spots in the defense exactly what happened there Campbell completes it and so far this uh, well let's call it the Gulf Coast offense I like that of Al Borges <laughs> is, is clicking right along first down just outside the 10 yard line Ronnie Brown lined up near side Carnell Williams alone back. He has the football, lowers the pads. Second effort to the six. Well, that Cadillac got a tune-up this week. He's running on eight cylinders, my friend. Uh, I, th I think Cadillac's been watching some Ronnie Brown oh. takes about that contact. It's one of those, you know, you like apples? Second. How do you like them apples? He is just bringing the whole load. Look at the shoulder pad level and then the knees driving. Looking like one of my old teammates, Roger Craig, with that high knee drive. Four carries, 19 yards. Carnell is 5'11", 210. Again, you see the offense of Al Borges uh, continues to really make constant shifts. Williams again, the ball carrier. LSU able to wrap him up behind the line of scrimmage. No gain at the six-yard line. Ronnie Prude comes up from the corner. See, there's really two reasons, Craig, that you do all this multiplicity as far as looks and motion and everything else one is to see if you can a fool them for Tommy Tuberville and number two is how do they adjust so next time you come back with that formation you know how they adjusted now right there in that for that example the safety got in the slot and then crashed on the run made the tackle you know that next time you run it you do something different on the pass or run third down four Campbell from the shotgun takes a seat back at the 13-yard line. Laron Landry came up from the free safety spot. Outstanding speed, and he was in the backfield with Campbell before a blink. This is numbers. One, two, three. You just don't have the blockers on that side. Here comes the blitz. Here comes the bodies. You got to make a decision. You got, got him coming onside and backside. That's just a nice defensive call by Nick Saban and the LSU Tigers. They just brought two more than, than they had blockers. This will be a 29-yard field goal attempt by John Vaughn. He's one of two on the scene. He's the longest of 43. Trying to hook it in and got it. I think that was tipped, Craig. Right at the line of scrimmage as little, it was going up. Little curveball. <laughs> a little left a lot of spin on it. Here's that, uh, that field goal attempt again by Auburn. You have to remember, the uprights are supposedly, you know, they rise to infinity. So you're talking about they just keep going up. Where is it? Right, right there, right there, right there. It stays right on the upright. It's a perfect angle to show it was close, but Vaughn just did, uh, he used all of them, put it that way. He never got outside of them. And Randy, your eagle eye was uh, tuned in. That ball was deflected at the line coming off his yeah. foot. 
No paw, just fingers. That's right. 29 yard <laughs> field goal. 6 3, our score. LSU scored a touchdown on their opening drive. Bo with the touchdown. The extra point was missed on a 14 play, 80 yard drive. Long, long kick, no return. Xavier Carter just watches it bounce out of the end zone. And in this week's Home Depot coaches' decision, hey, we take a look at Coach Saban's decision at LSU to teach the players karate in an attempt to limber up by taking karate lessons. They look like they're also uh, dropping a few beads, too. <laughs> Jamarcus Russell now in a quarterback. This is Nick Saban's system, as he told us, Randy, that both these players have abilities that he must get on the football field. Vincent, the ball carrier, maybe six yards to the 26, now they say five to the 25. Also, from a coach's standpoint, it's a very smart move by Nick Saban. He's got a, a senior leader, leader in Randall. He's got a red shirt freshman into a program like this that's so stocked with good talent. And this redshirt freshman, Russell, can flat chunk this rock around. His specialty is the passing game. Big arm. He'll stand up and he can throw it. Not much of an arc, but is just on a string. From the eye, second down, play action. Good protection, again, up and over, wide open along the far sideline. Watch out, Craig Davis breaks one, two, three tackles to the 34-yard line. Carlos Rogers finally wrapped him up. Right. Folks, if you like offensive football and you like nice throws, you're going to be crazy about this. We talked about his arm. Russell doesn't loft it. He throws that nice high position as he stands in. You know, talk about lasers bouncing off some things. They, they occasionally get absorbed, and that was a nice job of absorbing a laser that was thrown into the perfect spot in that nice hole between the safety and the corner. Well, Davis has been a favorite target of LSU quarterbacks over the last couple of weeks. Had four receptions against Arkansas State a week ago for 73 yards. He picks up 42 on that grab. Russell taken down. Good coverage downfield, and there was a man open. Oh, Xavier Carter was breaking open over the middle of the field. That was six points if they don't get that pressure. A loss of 11 at the end of the first quarter has come to an end at Jordan Air Stadium here in Auburn. 6-3, our score, LSU. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. This crowd erupted just before kickoff as War Eagle 6, for the first time in two years, flew around the stadium, and what a beautiful sight it was. And that, that is one extremely well-trained, oh. it just flew perfectly over the crowd, swooped down, I mean, that was, that was tingling. Start of the second quarter. That's a dive, trying to roll outside to the 40, call up the 39-yard line. Kevin Sears in on the tackle. And there is a flag down inside the 35. We look at referee Steve Landis and his crew. He'll give us the call. yard face mask against the defense number four 15 yard penalty first down well that's the safety junior rose green a senior from fort lauderdale 15 yards i don't think war eagle thought much of that See another thing though I, I would really remember if i was auburn that last next to last play that the, the lsu ran with that formation to the wide side of the field, wide receiver, slot receiver. They got that thing right down the heart of the field. Auburn bit, it was wide open. You had better adjust because Saban will come back to it. First and 10, LSU at the Auburn 24. 
So first and 10 at the 24 yard line. Craig Davis in motion. Vincent stacked up, lost the yard back to the 26. Nice hit by Sears. The outside linebacker. Well, that's the definition of staying home backside. Sears just never even budged off his backside position there at the linebacker position. So you're the running back. You say, well, I'll try back up. Let me go. Well, never mind. Sears did not pursue. That is your responsibility as that backside linebacker. And that's perfect execution. Sears has a brother, Aaron, who's an offensive lineman at Tennessee. Second down, 11 after the one-yard loss. Quick throw, incomplete. Davis, the intended receiver, and it was knocked away by Montavious Pitts. Montavious Pitts. Seeing the young quarterback, Russell, just almost throwing kind of like a, a fall-away dart. You know, when you're playing darts, you never th do it throwing, falling away from the board. You do it going towards the board. Much more accurate, and that's where the problem was accuracy-wise. The ball went low as he was falling away. Boy, Russell just towers over that offensive huddle. 6'5". 6'5", 245. Pocket passer. Who says that they're kind of a dying breed, the pocket passer? Not anymore, folks. LSU calls timeout. Play clock was running dry. 14 minutes before half. I could swear that looks like a young Randy Cross. That's a young lineman with that much cheeks. Hey, for complete <laughs> college football coverage with lightning fast scoring and play-by-play -play for all top 25 college football games, go to CBSSportsLine.com. LSU, I mean, Auburn will bring the heat here, Craig. They will bring the blitz. We'll get some matchups outside one-on-one. -on -one. Randall sets, fires, low toss, incomplete. Intended for Bow, and on his back was Rose Green. Boy, to the sea of orange today. But guy, you had to just watch those de the defenders for Auburn match up. Two on the near side, one top of the screen. Pure man. That was the opportunity you were looking for if you were LSU. Well, Chris Jackson, who missed that point after the touchdown, will go for a field goal now of 42 yards and got it. His longest before that boot was 34. Makes it from 42. And LSU builds their lead to 9-3. We'll be back. LSU leads Auburn 9-3 after the 42-yard field goal by Jackson. LSU again putting together a long drive. This one went eight plays, 55 yards, just under three minutes. Back to receive Aroma Shudu and Carnell Williams. Deep kick, and there will be no return. So Auburn will start on their own 20-yard line. And this Wednesday, a new drama from Jerry Bruckheimer and the producers of CSI. Don't miss CSI New York, and it premieres Wednesday at 10, 9 Central, right here on CBS. There's Jason Campbell. We talked about the height of Jamarcus Russell of LSU at 6'5", Campbell 6'5", 225. And he spent that whole break with Al Borges on the sideline going over that next series. You don't become five of six to start a, a game like this without having some serious game plan. Cooper Wallace in motion. Campbell sprints out. Tries to pick up a block, heads to the sideline, maybe a yard of the 21-yard line. Chased down by Cameron Vaughn. You know, for Al Borges there as uh, his offensive coordinator, that, that was something a little bit weird on that play. That was a nice toss fake to one side. But usually when a quarterback comes out naked like this in any kind of offensive game plan or any kind of offense where you really specialize in passing, there's usually somebody dragging underneath for the quarterback to dump off real quick to if he gets pressure. There was nobody there for Campbell. 
I formation. Jake Slaughter checks in 44 at the fullback spot. Movement up front. Flags are down. The toss is made. And a near catch inside the 50. Oh, right through the arms of Courtney Taylor. Corey Webster on coverage, but that was a ball he'd like to have back. I think what he might want to have back even more than that is a full sprint the entire route. To see about halfway through there, it almost seemed like he, when he was looking up adjusting, he slowed down. Defense was in the neutral zone, number 90. Five yard penalty, Pete second down. Uh, there's a drill a lot of quarterbacks do is they put a trash can out there about 35 40 yards on the sideline and they practice throwing the ball arcing it into the can that would have been a perfect drop into the can and the ball passed right through his hands into the can Williams and Brown they have staggered and split as Al Borges continues to throw just a multiple of offensive sets Look at this, watch out Williams, around the corner, driven out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Cadillac picks up 16, Jesse Daniels, the tackle for LSU. You know, how, how comfortable is Campbell, Jason Campbell in this offense? Well, he's comfortable enough right now to audible. You can tell he audibles the near formation with the triple stack. You have the triple stack left, the quick flip, that got those matchups, and that got the linebackers in positions they didn't know which gap to run through. Williams now with six carries for 37 yards. First down, Auburn. Campbell out of the pocket, on the run, throws deep. Had a man, and he fell as he looked back. Ronnie Brown incomplete. That son is strong. I think uh, maybe clip the heel as well. Yeah, the, the old incidental contact. Well, it's never incidental when it happens to you. Kind of like minor, minor surgery. You know, you trip your trip yourself and you get your leg behind your ankle behind your leg like that. And you know, Ronnie Brown's a heck of a receiver out of the backfield. I'm not sure 40, 50 yards down the field he's had that much practice catching the ball. Four catches on the season. Boy, he had a big day against Mississippi State last week 147 yards rushing comes that audible again from the eye Carnell Williams breaks a tackle lowers those pads drives and picks up a couple of extra yards on second effort at the 46 well time ready for the Aflac question Auburn is the only team in college football history to have what? <laughs> That's kind of broad, isn't it? But Third you stick around and we'll have the answer. <laughs> That's a short one. To have what? What? Campbell under the rush. Tries to set up the screen. Incomplete. Good defense by LSU. Well, you know, a, a, an offensive line's job on a screen pass is to stop the defensive line and then let them go. They get back on the sideline. You've got to point out, stop your guys. You want to still kind of halt their motion? <laughs> they never halted any motion from that rush coming into Campbell's face, and that's how you get that kind of pressure. Marcus Spears brought the heat untouched, was big number 84. Cody Bliss will punt for Auburn averaging just under 45 kicks 45 yards a kick Corey Webster back to return fair catch at the nine nice job by Bliss nice job faking that faking the fake right well CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this message and a word from your local station You thought this game would be played because of Hurricane Ivan. It passed through, the skies cleared. 
And here we are on a sunny Saturday afternoon in Auburn. Not much for Justin Vincent. Well, Wednesday on CBS, it is a Dr. Phil primetime event. Think you know how your kids act when you're not around? Hey, you might be surprised. Plus, the family could be raising a serial killer. Don't miss the Dr. Phil primetime special. It's Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. From the shotgun. So that same formation, bottom of the screen with a slot receiver that broke wide open. Russell gives it to Vincent, breaks a tackle, good pursuit. Put his crowd on their feet. Auburn Tigers at defense throws Vincent back for a one-yard loss, led by Dickens for the defensive tackle. We talked about playing the game on the other team's side of the line of scrimmage. Watch the penetration up front by the Auburn Tigers. You're not playing the game on your side of the ball. You're playing the game on their side of the ball, and you make the running back start making breaks before he even gets to the line of scrimmage. Interesting call here for LSU, Randy. Three wide outs to the near side. Third down and eight. Good protection. Lob pass. Incomplete. He was looking for a die out of the backfield. And Jamarcus Russell, who really is a, is a guy with not a lot of touch right now, try to touch that ball, throw some touch on that ball, and over, overthrew it. It was also a case where Tommy Tuberville's defense wasn't buying. LSU was selling three wides to the bottom of the screen. They were trying to flood one side, and the Auburn defense did not overcommit to that side, so there was plenty of defense there, and there was nowhere to drop that little lob into. Chris Jackson, about three yards deep in his own end zone. Oh, it's a beauty. High, high hanger, fair catch, called fourth to 39 by Carnell Williams. Nice punt by Jackson and a timeout. 10.35 left in the second quarter. Well, for LSU and Auburn, high hopes for both teams this year. And for more on that, let's go downstairs. Here's Dwayne Ballin. Craig, the hopes were even higher. If most of y'all us remember for last year for Auburn, they were expected to contend for a national championship. Of course, LSU eventually won it. The Tigers told us early this week that they actually like the idea of playing the season without many people having lofty expectations of them. First Carnell Williams Auburn, specifically told us they felt they were very capable of shocking the entire college football world this year, Craig. Randy, you know a little bit about high and low expectations. <laughs> Absolutely. And if they're on you, it's usually what you want to refer to as unrealistic. <laughs> uh -huh. And Randy, just to put a, an exclamation, exclamation point on that, there's a lot of pressure on Tommy Tuberville right now to win and win big. Well, I mean, they've identified four games as being the first of those four games, you know, with Georgia, LSU, Tennessee, Florida, as games his football team has to do well in. But I tell you, if there's a key, one key you have to say really holds the fate of this football team, it's what you've just seen, that last play, Ronnie Brown. Pound the ball offensively. It's going you know, to set up your passing game down the field just beautiful. Again, you see multiple sets shown today by Auburn. Ronnie Brown to the 48-yard line. Now, we've talked a lot about formations in motion. You've got formation. Now, here's the effect of motion. Motion comes this way. They're thinking this, and Auburn gives you that. Watch the motion, and watch how quickly Ronnie Brown gets right up the gut. Hey, Randy, if, if Carnell is the Cadillac, Ronnie's got to be the Escalade. Ooh, that or the Hummer. <laughs> he, he hits like a Hummer. Two wideouts near side, first and 10. LSU showing blitz. Hand off, Brown again off the right side. Well, oh, he's rumbling strong right now to the 39. Turner and Daniels wrap him up. 
Daniels with 4.3 speed in the 40-yard line. And Randy, here's our AFLAC trivia question answer. As in what? <laughs> what does Auburn have that no one else in college football has? Well, John Heisman, the head coach of Auburn, and then a couple of Heisman Trophy winners. Pat Sullivan, 71, and everybody knows about Bo back in 85. That's what they have. That, that's, that's, that's the what. So the other thing they have is these two running backs that are really very good decision makers. And when they decide where they're going to go, whether it's Ronnie Brown or Cadillac Williams, watch them when they get the ball. And as soon as that decision light goes on in their head, they are heading straight up the field. There's no wiggle and jiggle to these guys. They make a decision, they go. They've combined in this first half for 72 yards. Four wide receivers set first down from the LSU 35-yard line. Not this time. Melvin Oliver, big number 90. Wraps up Ronnie Brown. Now a late flag comes on the pile. Well, that's the best solution for decision and go and something that'll cause wiggle and jiggle. Put two or three guys right in front of them and know where to decide to go. Steve Landis has the call. Some lengthy discussion. Well, it's early in the season for everybody. That's one great thing about this college game. Illegal block, below the waist, by the offense, number eight. 15-yard penalty, defeat first down. Called on Cooper Wallace. Coming in from the outside into the box. Chop blocking down below the legs there on that linebacker. That's a 15-yard penalty. Takes it back past midfield to the 49. So first and 25, second penalty flag thrown against Auburn. Here he comes, Cadillac Williams to the 45, maybe the 44-yard line of LSU. Well, Craig, you mentioned the, the crown on this field. And probably the most crowned field I ever saw was in Norman, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. The running backs were always going downhill, and part of being able to make those great decisions for these two running backs is they're going downhill. You're at the top of the crown in the middle of this field. No matter what, you go to your right right here from this right hash mark, you've got a, you've got a head start. Now you disappear to Norman. Campbell sets up and throws, and it's complete to Anthony Mix. Two-year letterman had a couple of touchdown catches last week against Mississippi State. Yeah, I like this young man at wide receiver. I tell you, he's a he's only a junior right now, but at 6'5, 241 pounds coming out of the slot here. You see a lot of people at the next level at wide receiver his size. I'm not sure if they wouldn't want to put about five pounds on him and make him a kind of a Todd Heat, Tony Gonzalez at the next level. Yeah, he's definitely uh, in that in that mix. This is Anthony Mix. Look at that stack on the bottom. Campbell, three-step drop throws. Once again, Mix. LSU play a little soft. They didn't want to give up the big play. They'll bring up fourth down at about the 33-yard line. Pittman wrapped him up. In this style of offense, no matter what you want to call it, I'm going to call it the Gulf, Gulf Coast offense for Tommy Tuberville. The idea is to confuse defenses at times and at other times get the ball into playmakers' hands. Spread it around and get it into the hands of the people that can make the plays. You know, in any offense, it's the wide receivers and the running backs, and it's just what they're doing. Earlier in warm-ups, you know, Auburn was kicking a lot of field goals, and this is outside of their range. They, this is not where some they feel comfortable trying a field goal. Cody Bliss will punt. I'm gonna try to drop this inside the 10-yard line. A little run to the right. And a pooch kick lands five yards deep in the end zone. No return for Webster. 542 left. In the second quarter, LSU hanging on to that six-point lead in Auburn. Welcome back. 
back in a quarterback is the senior Marcus Randall who drove LSU to the first touchdown. Ali Broussard also in at running back. So we've seen Vincent and Adai. Two wide receivers near side. Play action. Randall rolls out, throws incomplete. He wanted his tight end, David Jones, number 82. I know one thing, since that first series of this game, where LSU came out was sort of smiling and dialing, they ran nine times for 45 yards in that first drive. Since then, Nick Saban's offense has had five rushes for minus five yards. And Auburn's defense has found a way on first down of remember that, getting behind getting behind on the sticks. Well, they've gotten the LSU offense way behind on the sticks since that first drive. Double tight set. Quarterback sneak. Randall big fella breaks one tackle but cannot escape to the 21. Travis Williams, number 51, the middle linebacker with another stop. Nice penetration by TJ Jackson too, getting in the backfield initially. Jackson and Johnson working from the inside. That's just wonderful defense, penetrating. That's what we talked about from LSU's defense, playing on their side of the ball. Auburn's got the other side of the ball thing working right now. Corey Webster playing some double duty, Randy. Returning kicks, wide receiver. That's because of Skyler Green's ankle injury. They need that, that speed presence. Webster lines up to the far side. A die is in. And the shotgun is Randall on third down and nine. Flush down of the pocket, heads to the near sideline, on the chase, throws deep, has a man turn around, incomplete. But that ball was uncatchable. Craig Davis in the vicinity, but Randall forced to throw that one out of bounds. Well, wow, that scramble drill time. They got the, uh, that pressure on Randall, flushed him out of the pocket. Then it turns into a scramble drill, and you know, Craig Davis did a nice job getting down the field, but the, the pressure and the, just the persistence in this Auburn defense has made the difference these last few possessions. Trey Smith back to receive the punt from Chris Jackson. Jackson standing at his own seven yard line. Another good kick. Trey Smith at the 36. Smith at the 40, 45, still on his feet at the 50. Flags are down and is thrown down at the 47. Well, LaRon Landry with the special teams tackle, but a flag is down. Yeah, that late on a return, especially one on a guy that's jumping and juking like that, it's usually either a hold or a block into the back into a guy that you weren't really counting on ever trying to hit. Again, Steve Landis conferencing. 421 left before we go back to New York for halftime. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman will bring you up to date. During the return, blocking the back on the receiving team. In yard penalty. First down. <laughs> well, Tuesday on the amazing race, four teams remain who will win a million. Don't miss the two-hour season finale of the amazing race at a special time. Tuesday at 9, 8 Central on CBS, America's most watched network. Talks about that LSU offense being stopped a little bit. Look at the, the total yards of what we've seen so far, rushing and passing. But first two series, LSU had the ball 14 plays and eight plays, one for a touchdown, one for a field goal. Last three times has been three and out, three and out. It's time for Auburn to get some point, more points on the board. Put a little more pressure on that LSU offense. More of that offensive shift. You see Campbell now trying to audible. Play clock ran dry. A flag is down. No, and, and Randy, you brought this up earlier. With all the multiple sets, you do risk. You do risk penalties. Ball start, number 66 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still 
first down. Whether it's motion yeah. or if the play clock uh, runs out. Well, especially with your line, as you train them, and later in the year it'll be easier, but they spend so much time in their stances because of the formation stuff and the motion stuff. And, you know, for Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, he says at this point of the season he's willing to accept yes. some of those mistakes. First down and 15. Slaughter back in at fullback. And again, Campbell changing, mixing things up at the line. They'll go on the ground. Here comes Williams. Follows his blocker. Still on his feet inside. LSU territory at the 47. Corey Webster, Marcus Spears brought him down, but not before. A pickup of 21 yards. This LSU defense needs both All-American candidates on that defensive side of the ball. Webster and Spears to counteract this. Because the Cadillacs got it turning. I tell you, you've really got to go some to point out to me. Any university in this country that's got two running backs like Brown and Williams, they can hit come at you out of the same backfield with this kind of punch. You know, last year, over 1,300 yards. He only needed 109 yards to surpass 3,000 career today. He's got 70. Campbell dropped maybe a yard at the 44. Melvin Oliver, a couple big tackles in his first half. The junior who weighs in about 275. Now remember what we talked about, though, at the very beginning, Craig, that Nick Saban's defense loves to play in the other team's backfield. And one of the things that this all this motioning and these formations has done, it seems like it's made him a bit hesitant. They haven't attacked or they haven't spent as much time in the Auburn backfield. It's been a difference. Second down nine, four wide receivers. Campbell from the shotgun. Throws the slant, nearly intercepted. What's a dangerous throw? Prude, Ronnie Prude, the senior from Streetport. Had a, well, I'll tell you, another step, he was yeah. going for six. Ronnie Prude's got to almost think, why was I knocking this down? I mean, it's, it's just on the fingertips reach-wise, but that's one of those, one of those passes you see a quarterback throw, and it's almost like he wishes he had a string on it. You yank it back. You know, from up here, you see it unfold, and you go, uh-oh. No, he's not going to. No, oh, yeah. yeah, he does. He pulled the trigger, got away with it that time. Third down, nine. Under three minutes left in the second quarter. Campbell sets up heavy pressure. Takes a seat from behind. Lionel Turner was there. Kyle Williams also in on the tackle. A loss of seven. Hey, you want to talk about playing the game in the other team's backfield? Watch the defense come this way, especially Turner. Right off the edge of the guard, never stops, brings that penetration the whole way. Now coming into the backside of Campbell, you'd normally say you'd have a hard time seeing it, but opening up the other way, he had a pretty good view of Turner coming from that linebacker spot all the way. And Randy, uh, if you play linebacker, you're a defensive coach, you have to like the way he tried to slap that ball away from Campbell yeah, the, and force the fumble. The old LT strip. Yeah. Webster pedals back, nine-yard line, lost it! And got it. Oh, LSU <laughs> nearly. Nearly gave one up. I'm not sure if I can spell fortuitous, but I can say it. That was a fortuitous bounce. 43 yard punt. LSU will have it with 203 left. Field position been a factor in this quarter, especially Randy. This, this drive will start at the eight yard line. Remember that first down. First down is set up the last few series. Justin Vincent back in for that LSU backfield. He'll get the carry. Sidesteps a tackle and works his way to the 10-yard line. And coming up on the Earthlink Halftime Report, Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman will get you caught up with all the scores, all the highlights on, yes, a very busy day in college football. Stay tuned right here on CBS. Well, Spencer Tillman ran down that, uh, that dome field in Norman a little bit, didn't he? I was thinking about it. We should... Uh, Hook up Spencer and ask him about those days of that crown down in Norman. The one on Barry Switzer's head or yeah. the one on the field? <laughs> sure, he's got a story about both. <laughs> Double tight set. 
Second down, call it seven. Randall pulls it back in, watch out, reaches out for the first down at the 23-yard line. Pitts made the tackle. 12-yard gain for Marcus Randall. That's a nice call by Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator for LSU. You're getting a lot of aggressive play from this from this Auburn defense and that you see the punt punt they just started going after Randall at the quarterback position call a quarterback draw let him be aggressive take advantage of it on first down Davis and Bo your two wideouts first down Vincent finds a seam off the left side Vincent. behind uh, Whitworth his tackle a pickup of four under a minute, clock runs. A couple of good positive runs, though. Remember the five carries for minus five on those two previous series. They had 45 in the opener. You get a quick 10 with your quarterback, another quick five with your halfback. Your offense is in a different spot. Your play calling sheet looks a lot rosier when you're getting those positive gains. Broussard in that LSU backfield. He'll get the carry. Goes outside, finds a hole. First down, second effort. I tell you, the, the LSU running backs, and along with Auburn, there's a lot of yards after the initial contact. A lot of pads are lowered, and, and one or two, three extra yards each time they pop through that line. You know, there's a common theme, whether it's Tommy Tuberville's back or Nick Saban's back. The offensive linemen are just like Velcro to the defenders when the running backs are running good. Nick Saban will just, uh, Randy walk to the locker room and up by six, nine, three. In fact, the coach is with Dwayne Ballon. Guys, here we go, Big Blue. No problem, but after that, Auburn made you work really hard. Well, you know, we just got to execute a little bit better. We've had some things open and made a couple bad throws. You know, we're changing the quarterbacks around. Maybe we lost the momentum a little bit, but we need both those guys to play well for us. But I think the number one thing we need to do is play better on defense. We've, let, we've allowed them to move the ball and give us bad field position offensively and made it tough for us to operate. Quickly, will you have Skylar Green in the second half? No, we'll only use him on punt return if we need him to catch the ball. Thank you, Coach. Craig? All right, Dwayne, thanks. That ends the first half of play. LSU up 9-3. We now take you to Tim Brando. Domino's Pizza. Moments away from the start of the third quarter, LSU with a six-point lead over Auburn. Craig Bullerjack back along with Randy Cross. And Randy, we saw both offenses put together fine drives to start this game. Then the defense has made adjustments. But I really think that the honest here is on Auburn. It's on Tommy, Tommy Tuberville's team. They've only got a field goal. They need to get some points and get points quickly. They've been in this position before against LSU, but LSU has always been able to pull away and make the big difference. You can't let LSU score first in the second half. Look at some halftime numbers. Total yards nearly even. LSU 156, Auburn 151. Passing yards, rush yards. The penalties, a bit of a separator. Auburn four flags for 45. LSU flagged twice for only 10. But between Williams and Brown, they've rushed for 101 yards. The quarterback, Jason Campbell, has minus 13. Second half underway. Aroma Shudu takes a knee five yards deep. Auburn will start at the 20 yard line. We'll see what Al Borges has in store in this West Coast slash Gulf Coast, Gulf Coast offense yeah. to start the third quarter. Let's start, go back to that West Coast Museum. Yes. All those guys are, they got hair of the color of mine. <laughs> Al Borges has got a def defense or offense here. It is going to see a very aggressive defense. You remember what Nick Saban said to Dwayne Ballon going in. He was disappointed in the aggressiveness of his D. Darnell Williams takes the opening carry in the third quarter, maybe a yard up to the 21. Carnell with 70 yards in the opening half of play. But if you're Auburn, you can't get away from that multiplicity, that, that look you were giving LSU, all the different formations, all the motions, all the change-ups. Second down, nine. 
Around the corner comes the Cadillac to the 25. Let's go downstairs. Here's Dwayne Ballant. Craig, I spoke with Coach Turbeville of Auburn a few moments ago. He said the biggest concern of his was on offense, picking up LSU's blitzes, too many of those getting through. Third down conversions, too much in the favor of LSU as opposed to Auburn. He is happy, though, with the running game and knew it would be a game like this. If you had to guess as far as how many points, I don't think there'll be more than 20 points scored in this second half. It's going to be a matter of quality as far as getting the sevens. Who gets the sevens wins the game. First one to 20 may just do it. Pressure Campbell sidesteps weaves his way to the 25 yard line. Well short of the first down and that brings up fourth down for Auburn. I'll tell you one thing, there's no lack of enthusiasm on the sideline for the LSU defensive staff. I mean, they are all over the field. Well, it's been led by Marcus Spears as well. Some people said, why did you come back, Marcus? Well, he said, I want to graduate. I want to improve my draft that status. And I want to secure the legacy, the trademark, of what I call my defense. He wants to put his stamp on his stamp. Webster back pedals fair catch at the 27 yard line. That's where LSU will start their first drive up by six. Nice kick of 48. We'll be back to Auburn on a sunny Saturday after this. LSU with the football in a six point lead. Craig Bowler Jack. Andy Cross, Dwayne Ballin, our CBS crew here in Auburn, Alabama. You remember, Randy, that Marcus Randall started this game. LSU moved the ball very well. The change came with Jamarcus Russell, the redshirt freshman. What do you think? Uh, I think that zero, that point four is a nice difference in an adjustment. You know, when they don't have Randall in, they just lack a little calm. Uh -huh. It's a little more skittish. I mean, anything can happen with Russell. But I think Nick Saban made a good point about maybe not changing it in and out so much. Took away some rhythm. Broussard breaks a tackle and takes it down the sideline. Steps out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Power running. Pitts and Herring made the tackle. One thing about LSU, Randy Cross, they are not in need of depth at running back. Vincent, a die, and you just saw Ali Broussard, only a sophomore, with a lot of power and speed. And hey, we've alluded a lot about that running downhill by the running backs for Auburn. That's just the last two possessions. It's been all downhill for LSU. Excellent blocking up front and good aggressive decision making by the running backs. Yeah, many believe this game would be one in the trenches, and the score may prove that to be correct. Randall fakes the pass, talks and runs it up to around the 44-yard line. Now, you saw how successful that very play was in the last series before the half. And the reason you run that is for the very reason they were successful in the first, first play, just kind of splattering that left side of the Auburn defense. You make a call like that because you've got a runner like Marcus Randall, who's very good at, out of the quarterback position. And Nick Saban's offensive staff is anticipating a blitz, an aggressive move by that side to compensate for the last play, trying to come underneath. They didn't get it. Second down, seven. Auburn with a shift up front. Play action rollout. Randall steps and throws incomplete. Bo, so close. The way Bo had that earlier touchdown in the first quarter. No, there, there's fitting it in and, and there's missing them flat open. That's missing them flat open. He, we've seen Randall fit a few in and, and I think if he had that one to throw over, he might have set his feet and, and been able to throw that one a little differently because he had a wide open bow. Third down conversions. They started this game three of three since then 0 for three. And I think the birth of that is what they were doing on first down. It was setting them, uh, getting them behind the sticks as they say. Movement, no flag, and now one drops. Ball down, ball down. That was a bean. That was a bean bag. He was marking the spot of the fumble. Randall lost it, and Auburn covers up. McLover forced that ball out of the hands of Marcus Randall.
That's exactly what Tommy Tuberville wanted out of his defense. If they give you a chance, if you see ball and you can strip it, take it. See ball, strip it. Ball is down there. More importantly, Marcus Randall is really, really wrapped up on that play by Stanley McClover. He couldn't get back at it. Cornell Williams slides to the 39-yard line. He'll pick up a couple, maybe three. Speed is a plus for Auburn's backs. 4-4 for the Cadillac and Ronnie Brown. They've clocked him at 4-3. They're both in the backfield right now, 24 and 23. Don't get away from that multiple look. You were giving them a bad time in the first half. Now this is the simple stuff. Straight up eye. Second down. Hopping over that defensive front is Williams and Kyle Williams. Number 95, a junior from Ruston, Louisiana, makes the stop for LSU. Well, that was uh, straight eye is the kind of thing that Tommy Tuberville said, we can't do this on a regular basis. But that was all about Ingle, Grubbs, McNeil on the left side of that offensive line just boning up and staying latched on to the defenders for LSU. Ronnie Brown goes out. The fullback, Jake Slaughter, comes in, 44. On third down and short. Not this time. That brings up fourth down. Good pursuit. LSU went through the gaps and dropped Carnell. Any questions as to why you don't want to get in that, that eye look? Look at the penetration coming into the gaps by this LSU defense. They're playing on Auburn's side of the field. That is their football game, and you're asking for a steady diet of this if you're Al Borges in this offense, if you keep keeping static formations. They fooled him and had him in rough spots in the first half with the multiple formations in motion, and they've come out very vanilla in the second half, and LSU's been able to zero in. Cody Bliss will punt. Skyler Green, who has seen limited action because of a high ankle sprain, will field the pump. But there is a timeout, and we'll come back to Auburn. 10.06 left, third quarter. LSU by six. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by TIAA Crep, Wrangler, Red Lobster, and by AOL. Welcome back, Jordan Air Stadium. 87,451 on hand today. That's a starting defense still out there for LSU, Craig. They're looking for some kind of fake, some kind of action. A little trickery. Bliss is going to side, a little pooch kick it. Drops it inside the five. Oh, got it at the one. Great coverage by the punt team. Randy, you and I were just talking before we came back. If you don't pu push LSU back within the 10, that fumble meant nothing. Well, thank Jordan Reaver. He gets down there, knocks it back. His play. And let's take a look at the SEC moment presented by Sonic. The date, September 17th, the year 1994. Auburn mounted an unlikely comeback. Three interceptions for touchdowns in the fourth quarter. One by Ken Alvis, the other Fred Smith. And then Brian Robinson capped it off with a 30-26 victory over LSU. Well, you get into those positions, Craig, by getting them behind the sticks, like we've talked about. You back them up. You get the crowd behind you. You create breaks like that by defensively stopping them early in the downs. Well, look at that. Our average starting field position, LSU at the 18-yard line, their own 18. Randall stays at quarterback. They hand off Broussard. A little bit more of a power back in this situation, Randy. He, he weighs in around 235, and right now they're just trying to punch a hole in that Auburn front. Travis Williams with the tackle. 
Well, one difference from, from early to now is they've been successful running, but they're running on the creases, on the edges of the defense. They were running inside early. Now they're running right off the edge, right off the defensive end and the linebacker. They're splitting them or collapsing them, and they're just getting that little edge. Auburn showing blitz on second down and six. Broussard giving LSU some breathing room. Here's a guy who dropped about 10 pounds from a year ago, says, hey, I feel better, I'm quicker, I have more control. And so far on this drive, able to give LSU some room. Well, to use kind of a boxing analogy, they've gone to the straight right. <laughs> that play right there was just, just They're a, leading with the right. It was a body punch right to the solar plexus. Broussard's only got four carries, but he's got 33 yards. A couple of big carries. They move the ball out and out of the 16-yard line. First down, LSU. Here comes Broussard, running room. Watch it at the 40, 45, 50. And Broussard taken down hard at the 46 of Auburn. Well, you remember earlier we talked about defensive responsibility on the backside of a football play? Well, the defensive responsibility on this side of the Auburn defense, watch the collapse right there. See the whole wall that forms? That's where Broussard jumps. The contain has been broken. The responsibility has been broken. And that's just washing down the backside and having a running back that can take advantage of it good, with good vision. 38-yard gain to the Auburn 46-yard line. First and 10. New back. It's Vincent. And he'll push his way up to around the 41-yard line. How many coaches, Randy, in America would love to have Broussard rip off 38, take a break, you bring in Justin Vincent, who last year was the MVP of the SEC Championship, the MVP of the Sugar Bowl, and you also have Joseph Adai whenever you need him. Well, it's almost like, you know, you know duh, you slap yourself in the forehead and go, duh. Nick Saban said, how did I score that first touchdown? I had nine carries for 45 yards. I pounded him. That's how I had my early success, and they've gone back to it. Second down five. Not much as Vincent tried to turn the corner, find a little seam, and it closed quickly. And Terrius Williams, number 31 outside backer with a stop out of Columbus, Georgia. And now they're going to answer back with Joseph Adai. Yeah, but you're still in a very advantageous position if you're Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator for the LSU Tigers. You've got Broussard. You've got some excellent receivers. You've got a quarterback that can run. You know, and it's only third and two, third and three. The defense right now has to guess. They are not with the initiative. Xavier Carter in motion. Pumping once, now tucking to run, and out of bounds goes Randall. First down, LSU. McClubber chased him out. And once again, there's the value of that quarterback that can run. Because of the motion, you've got an isolation here. A die gets boned, but he almost acts as just enough football blocker to keep uh, McClover out of the way. And that's the value of a guy that can move. That's the consistency of this senior leadership. And we're seeing a lot of this calm out of LSU's deep offense. Randall now seven carries for 30 yards. Two wide receivers split up top. Codger pop, popping as Broussard works his way to the 32. Boy, Antarius Williams, the linebacker, 31. Do you see how fast he came into the backfield? He was going to absolutely load up on Broussard. And he pulled a little bit of a Randy Johnson, did a little no hitter there. Just put the head down a little too much. And Broussard ran right by him. This defense a year ago, Randy ranked fifth nationally in total defense at 281 and change. This year they're ranked 16th through two games, giving up a total of 255. Second down. 
Oh, a good read. Junior Rose Green played the lane and was able to trip up Randall. We talked about that defensive responsibility. Not only do you have the defensive responsibility, watch Junior come right up there, and, and it's nice tackling, but look how the blue jerseys are on the LSU side of the field, it's the LSU side of the ball. LSU was doing that with their defense to the Auburn offense, and right now here for the first time on this drive, Auburn's defense was playing on the LSU side of the ball. Four stops for Junior today. Big third down for Tommy Tupperville. Under six minutes left, third quarter, LSU by six. Randall, flags are down, and he is swarmed under at the 38-yard line. McGlover and Williams, but a flag at the 20. You got a little confrontation at the top of the screen. You got another flag up there, so you're going to have two fouls. A little confrontation push-off might be a, an offsetting, but when you get a flag from the deep middle, it usually involves some sort of holding, some sort of receiver has been held up or grabbed. I'll salute Steve Landis today, Randy. He has taken his time. He's conferred with his officials. He breaks huddle, and now he'll have the call. Both ways? I think Landis uh, failed to turn on his field mic. But he, both flags. He got his message across. Yes, so. he did. Both fouls whistled against LSU. This partisan crowd here in Auburn, they, they didn't really care much about the fact of what he was saying, but they saw which way he pointed both times. A 15-yard mark off back to the 47-yard line. Travis Williams, middle linebacker, is jumping up and down out there. It was just a second ago. He and the rest of that defense really trying to get this crowd sort of re-enlivened. All those running plays quieted down this Auburn crowd pretty good. Greg Davis in the slot. A die lined up next to Marcus Randall on third down and a quarter mile. Watch out! Oh, big hit! Brett Eddins from the blind side. Well, if Marcus Randall hasn't had his wisdom teeth taken out, they're now loose enough to pull. That's not really so much a blind side, but I mean, you talk about perfect form tackle, and he had the whole time to think about it. He's got that ball up. Form tackle 101. Don't hit to him, run through him. Fourth and 38. Chris Jackson inside his own 25 yard line. Trey Smith set to receive. High hanger, but short. Big bounce at the 30. And down at the 28-yard line. Oh, boy, there he is, Edens. Rocking the world of Randall. Nate Livens. Here's a tight end right here, David Jones. Watch what he does to the poor tackle. That's an offensive lineman's nightmare. It was on a back or a tight end. Cuts him off. He can't get the angle, and that sets up the uh, bonification, if you will. <laughs> Not the education, the bonification. Randall never saw him coming. You're right. The wisdom teeth are uh, ready for pulling. First and 10, Auburn. Down by six. Campbell sets up. Throws wide open across the middle. Cooper Wallace, the tight end. 31-yard pickup. Oh, how things have changed. LSU driving. Auburn's defense stands up. And now the big pass to Wallace for 31. Remember, we, I talked about the calming influence that Randall had had. Watch Campbell pump, bring it back, and have the poise to still deliver it on time and on target. You know, sure, you'd have loved to lead him. 
But when a guy's wide open like that, that's the hardest time to hit him. Second catch of the season for Wallace. Campbell on the run, throws, and gets uh, rid of it. Courtney Taylor was in the vicinity, number 86. Take a look at the Red Lobster Scholar Athlete Award, and it's Auburn's Ben Obamanu. He's a finance major, 3.38 in the classroom. Only a junior. That's our Red Lobster Scholar Athlete. That old Beverly Hillbillies, Jeth Jethro Bodine, be ciphering on stuff. <laughs> We've been ciphering on a lot of a lot of hidden yardage being lost in one here. I wasn't a finance major like Ben, but you've had some serious plus to the to the lost yardage here for Auburn. What did what did Jethro used to say? <laughs> Add the knot and a dot. A knot. A knot. A knot. <laughs> <laughs> nine, nine three LSU. <laughs> Take it. Sure. You know, just moments ago. LSU had the running game going, and then Auburn got him down about the 32-yard, right about here, okay, 32-yard line, right? And then the LSU offense went into just burning rubber full reverse. And this sets up some wonderful position for Auburn to get some points and get off this three they've been on since the first quarter. Second down, across the middle, bingo. Taylor. First down, Auburn, 25-yard line. Well, I talked about the running game at Auburn being ancestral and something they're just used to all with the Bo Jacksons and the Joe Cribs and people like that. They're going to learn to love this Gulf Coast offense. Get the ball to your skill players and let them run with it after they catch it. Third catch of the day for Courtney Taylor. First down, Auburn at the LSU 25. Anthony Mix in motion. On the pitch, around the corner comes Ronnie Brown. Let's go back to New York for an update, and here's Timmy. All right, Craig and Randy, North Carolina State trying to overcome four costly turnovers. T.A. McClendon bounces outside and gets into the end zone. It's now 16 to 7. Yes, there was an excessive celebration penalty. Didn't matter, they got the PAT. Still a close one, though, at Carter Finley, right? Hey, Tim, I've seen a couple of flags for excessive celebration around college football today. Hard to hold that enthusiasm, huh? Second down. Wallace in motion. Campbell sets back and throws. Kate Wallace again inside the 15 to the 11-yard line. Remember, we talked about the formations and the motion, Craig. Remember last... Last possession, where's the motion? Where's the stuff that was kind of confusing them? See, you got your tight end and you drag them across right underneath the coverage. The defense is going one way with the motion. You drag your tight end underneath. The linebacker has to try to put on the brakes. By the time he does, he's wide open. Two grabs for Wallace on this drive. One of 15, the other 11. This time on the ground, Williams. Try to scoot behind uh, Reddick, his right tackle, and Lindsey. Kyle Williams with the tackle. No gain at the 10. Craig, you see, they, they gave that ball to Cadillac Williams on the onside. They had that motion on the backside with, with Ronnie Brown coming around. Everyone was flowing so hard at Cadillac Williams. Upstairs here, the Auburn coaches have to be dying, yelling downfield. They're overreacting. They're overreacting. I would bring something back the other way. Williams on the sideline and Ronnie Brown in. And now a timeout as Campbell looked over that LSU defense, did not like what he saw and says, I'm head to the sideline, Mr. Cross. 123 left in the third. We'll be back. Tommy Tuberville pacing. Celebrating his 50th birthday today. How big is that Miss PAT going to be if the Auburn can convert here and get a touchdown? Well, look at the short stuff. One to 14 yards, very effective for Auburn's offense. Watch this. The throw, nope. Ronnie Brown crashes in. About the one-yard line. Mark down at the one. 
What a pop by Lionel Turner. And Ronnie Brown wanted to throw that football. Well, that was about a 90% good play from the LSU defense. They reacted very well to the pass. They reacted very well to the pursuit until right there. Then they forgot that it was Ronnie Brown carrying the ball, and Ronnie Brown put the head down. You, you want to talk about some strength. They all say it again, if Carnell's Cadillac, Ronnie Brown is the Escalade. They marked him out at the three and a half. Third down. Campbell to the corner, overthrows. Courtney Taylor was on the route, but that was just, a, that was a very close, but it was a nice job by Jason Campbell. We talk about the calming influence that Randall's had on the other side, and another nice play by Campbell getting the pressure, but getting the ball out. Okay. Randy, fourth and two. You're down six. 107 left, third quarter. We just got the answer. From Tommy Tupperville, Nick Saban looking on. Fourth and two. They need to get just inside the one. Campbell sets up. LSU holes. Jesse Daniels got a hand up. There he is, the strong safety, number 31. Uh, Jason Campbell just tried to throw this way too hard. And Remember the term point of emphasis from the NFL this year? Well, the point of emphasis is that you can't bump and, and jostle people inside that five, outside that five-yard window, and there's a lot of bumping, a lot of jostling, and just a little bit of holding, but Nick Saban's defense got away with it. That was a big, big stop. Quarterback change. Jamarcus Russell back in. We'll start this drive at the three and a half yard line. Broussard, the bruiser, is pushed back no gain by Travis Williams. Might have even lost about a half yard, Craig. But Auburn defense just attacking and being on the LSU side of the ball. Russell, Randy, was one of four in the first half for that long completion of 42 yards. And it's interesting, he makes his appearance here with less than a minute to go. As Nick Saban himself told Dwayne Ballin at halftime, want to keep some consistency in this game. Russell in his own end zone. Sets up, throws a floater, tipped away and complete. Carlos Rogers, for a moment, you thought he may have it. Dwayne Bow was open. That ball was intended for Dwayne Bow, and it just had a little bit of the high-speed wobble on it. it. Wasn't that kind of laser beam we saw the, the young QB throw earlier? That goes down to experience. That's something you have to chalk up in the old, uh, the old computer bank. Is next time you see some stuff like that, you, you handle it a little bit differently. You know, his first pass, as I mentioned, 42 yards to Craig Davis. That was in the first half since 0 for 4 passing. Big third down. Again, deep in his end zone. Throws caught at the 13-yard line. It's going to be close. It's going to be fourth down, but not by much. Bo made the grab. The sophomore from Miami. And Randy, you're right. Those 2020s are right on about a half a yard shy of the first down. What a nice job by Rodgers. Watch this close. Close on the tackle, wrap up. Perfect form tackle. Just short, maybe about two feet, but short. We played three quarters. LSU on top, 9-3. We'll return to Jordan Air Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. War Eagle 6. And number 24. Got a bird's eye view, Randy. 9-3 our score. Auburn's been shut out since that opening quarter when Vaughn hit a 29-yard field goal. They should have had fine field position after this punt. High, high hanger. Fair catch. 42. Lost it. 
It bounced right into the arms of an LSU player. They continue to unpile. And LSU has the football at the 44-yard line. Randy, I'm not sure. Maybe Dwayne Ballon has a better view. There is a setting sun here in Auburn if that played a factor. Bounces right off Parnell Williams' chest, being crowded, and bounces right into the arms of Daniel Francis, number 37. See, he's just being crowded a little bit. And look at Francis. It's... Christmas comes early to the Francis household. That ball bounces right into his arms. Only a sophomore. And LSU back in business at the 44-yard line. So Auburn's defense will be called upon again. But two series in a row of big plays. They were taken advantage of by the run there for that one series two series ago. And they got the big penalty, the big sack. Big momentum change for the defense. Stuffed them on the last series. And now all the pressure goes back onto the Auburn defense. Got to keep attacking. Can't forget to play the game in the other team's backfield. Williams trying to walk it off. Jamarcus Russell, the redshirt freshman, remains LSU's quarterback on second down. Call it seven from the shotgun. Sets up, throws a dart complete across the middle. Early due set, the freshman from St. Martinville, Louisiana. Some of those big plays by this Auburn defense, the last three series. The sack of McClever, Eatings. Heck, that whole series, but that that closing, that closing tackle that Rogers made, saving that one first down. But nice poise on the last possession by the young quarterback. First and ten. LSU, Dwayne Bow in motion. Play action pass. Russell could not. Scoot away and dropped at the 47 by T.J. Jackson. Last four possessions for LSU. Punt, punt, fumble. And then the half came. Early in this schedule, though, Nick Saban, I think, has to realize as his offense develops, it's about his defense. The defense is going to win games. Turnovers are going to win them games. Mm -hmm. Four wide receiver set, second down. Russell stands, throws, in traffic and caught. Big, big catch by the freshman Doucette. 13-yard pickup, first uh, near a first down. Well, you want to talk about hanging in as a quarterback, Jamarcus Russell to the last second, hugging the pocket, taking the pressure and getting this ball into Doucette. officials to measure the game. Over the linebacker between the safeties, he's a perfect placement. This puts Auburn in a tough spot. Really, when you think about it, Craig, because it's it's nine to three, and you've got a defense for LSU that's that's having a pretty good game against the Auburn offense. So you know, points-wise, you just can't flat afford to give up any more points because you're not going to get any huge plays against this LSU defense unless they make a bad guess, and it's not something they've done too much in this game so far. You can tell just short. As they stretch the chains, third and inches. 12.33 left. Both these teams offensively have been explosive in the first two weeks. 37 and a half point average for LSU. Auburn at 37, and today it's been a defensive battle. Watch the pad levels. Third and inches. Off left tackle, the keeper by Russell. First down, LSU. That offensive line of LSU just gets down and underneath Auburn's defensive players. When you've got a quarterback like the young Jamarcus Russell, who's six foot five, 245 pounds, 
It doesn't take much of a crease to get you that little bit they needed for that first down. That was behind Whitworth and uh, Terrell McG McGill, who got the start today in place of Will Arnold at left guard. Vincent back in the LSU backfield from the eye, first and 10 at the 32 yard line. Dwayne Bow in motion. Russell sets up, throws deep, incomplete. Drake Davis a half a step away from six. Oh, he's he is open. I think that I think Russell just got just enough pressure to affect the throw. Just enough pressure to have to get out of that, get rid of that ball a little bit before he wanted to. I think it was McClover coming from that backside on the pass rush that made the difference. Stops the clock, 11.58 remaining. Second down, 10 for LSU. Bow in motion. In round. Carter. Caught and dropped. He'll lose a couple, maybe three. I like the way Auburn, again, stayed at home and did not overrun the play. Remember the responsibilities. I keep mentioning it. Safety, corner, backside. Do you overreact? No. Good feet, and you lock in the play. Nowhere to go for Carter. You've got two guys mirroring him out there on the sideline. You might get by the first guy, but you aren't getting by the second. Nice play by Auburn, and they caught a very quick young freshman in Xavier Carter who's been clocked at 4-3-5 on a 40, and he could not get outside and hit the jet. Third down 11, Russell, good protection, steps up, throws, incomplete. Fourth down. So you have to say this Auburn defense has just done a nice job of swelling up and acting very much like they know they can't afford to give up any more points. This is it. Randy, are you surprised that the redshirt freshman Russell in a crunch time drive and not the senior and Marcus Randall? With some of the comments that Nick Saban made earlier, especially with Dwayne Ballin, and, and, and with the success that the offense had earlier in this half under the leadership of Marcus Randall, yeah, I am surprised. They just don't have that calm. There's just a little bit of doubt in the offensive mind and in their offensive execution. Clock. Yeah. Need five yards for a little room. Trey Smith back to receive for Auburn. I think Chris Jackson just wants an extra five yards or so. I love watching watching these punters in this game. It takes me back to my old rugby days. They're all kind of running along the side and kicking on the run. Delay of the game. Honey offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. <laughs> There's Trey Smith, a junior from Venice, Florida, awaiting. Remember how successful Auburn was in pinning back LSU last time. It's exactly the mission of this LSU coverage team. Pin him inside the five. High hanger. Inside the five, bounces into the end zone. Well, that one bounced quickly. Timeout, 10.50 left. Heading down the stretch in Auburn. Tell you, LSU, I think, gave up a big opportunity right there of getting that ball out of bounds. I, the punter kicked the ball perfectly. It landed on the four. They had coverage down, but they scattered away from it. They could have caught it or stopped it right after the, the first bounce. They'd be down on the three or four yard line. This game has been played in the trenches to this point. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. There's that multiple set offense for the Auburn Tigers and able to get away under some pressure. And breaking a tackle is mixed to the 30. What could have been a loss easily by Campbell in the backfield. Throws it out to mix, breaks a tackle, and a pickup of at least nine. Remember earlier we had the quick toss and Campbell came out and there was no one to throw to. They hadn't drugged the other receiver under. Well, Nix is the drag underneath, and then it's all want to. 
The catch was the fun part. The want to was the important part for the Auburn Tigers in those yards. Jesse Daniels let him off. Had him by the ankle. Bouncing off one hit is Williams and then pushed back for a loss of three to the 27. Turner, the middle backer. He's been busy today. He's averaged 10 stops a game through the first two weeks of the season. He talked about this being a trench type game. It's a perfect game for an inside linebacker like Turner. You know, for all the window dressing and whatnot that you've seen in motion and formations, you know, it's been a pretty basic type of an attack running right at you and using that play action and, and fake motion. Ronnie Brown to the near side. In the backfield, Williams. Campbell sets and throws. Brown has it. Breaks the tackle. And then game tackled and still on his feet. You've got to be kidding to the 32. <laughs> he was hit one, two. Three, four, five times and able to pick up three tough, tough yards. Defense said, we're going to hit you with one guy. Ronnie says, not enough. We're going to hit you with three guys. Ronnie says, not enough. We're going to bring one, two, three, four, five. Ronnie says, no, nope, another guess. Hope you got some behind those five guys. Yeah, new nickname, Escalade. Crowd reacted, thought they had a little bit of a face mask there towards the end of that play. Third down and eight for Auburn. Time becoming a factor. Down six, under 10 minutes left. Campbell, deep drop, pressure. Runs away, slings it downfield. Got it, nope, incomplete. But what a grab on the run. Obamanu. Reaching out, incomplete out of bounds. We well, talked about him being the scholar athlete. This is just the athlete. The finance major almost was able to stretch and make it good. It was good improv by, J by J Jason Campbell, though. You know, he wears size 14, so I thought maybe he could get one down. If he had 11s, he might have made it. <laughs> Cody Bliss. Will punt from his own 18 yard line. Scattered Green with that ankle sprain will return. Tough catch over the shoulder. He just doesn't have it. You could tell he's uh, had trouble putting the plan on that leg. Well, Tommy Tuberville said the only reason I'm going to have him back here is to catch it. A lot of catch, no go. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Verizon Wireless, Ballpark Franks, The Home Depot, and by Pontiac. Nine-three LSU, fourth ranked in the country against 15th ranked Auburn. Been that kind of knock them in your nose kind of football. LSU, departed Tigers on defense, Lavale, Hill, those, Alexander, and Hunt. And those top two on offense, yeah. Mock and Clayton. They miss that senior, that leadership and quarterback, and they miss that punch, that deep threat. You know, Clayton and Henderson combined for 22 catches for touchdowns last year. I mean, this is a defensive football team for, for Nick Saban. Russell in a quarterback. Broussard, the ball carrier, stood up and dropped at the 22. And for an Oregon-Oklahoma update, let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Rando. Tim. All right, Craig and Randy, the quack attack is on the board for Mike Milotti. What about Kellen Clemens? We'll look for and find Dante Rosario. 29 yards, the reception kept a nine play, 80-yard drive. Oklahoma still leads by 10. Hey, Tim, I'm wondering how uh, your partner in the studio is doing, watching the old alma mater get things done. Downfield the throw on a sliding catch. Complete at the 29. Nice grab on his backside by Dwayne Bow. Well, I'm sure you liked the catch. I, I was busy watching Jamarcus Russell throw that ball over, through, and around a host of Auburn Tiger defenders. It was a nice route, but look at that concentration by Russell getting all kinds of 
pressure from a clever and eating. Russell, find a little groove, Randy, making uh, completions on four of his last six passes. Broussard, the ball carrier, off the right side. Picks up two, maybe three. T.J. Jackson with another stop. He's been busy for Auburn. You mentioned earlier that, you know, Russell had completed that first one for 42 yards for Nick Saban, then went 0 for 4, and now he's got a little bit of that, that bounce to him, a little bit of that rhythm to him. And we've seen neither one of these quarterbacks really say, this is my job. If you want a situation, if you're this redshirt freshman, you want to declare you want this job, this is a situation yeah. on the road. You take this job. I think Nick Saban would like to have Randall or Russell step forward and say, it's my club. Vincent just checked in, and Auburn refuses to give up this football game. Defensively, they answer time and time again. Big hit, two-yard loss. Well, you know, they might be saying who's going to get the ball and, and who's going to get the offense for Auburn, for LSU, but Antarius Williams says, not on my field. This is our home turf. And for every big play that LSU's had in this second, le second half, there's been an Auburn answer, an Auburn big play. No play bigger than this one right here for the Auburn defense. Shotgun for Russell, a die. Lines up alongside on third down. High, high lobber, incomplete. He tried to get Davis to run underneath it. Will Herring on coverage and uh, Randy McClover bringing pressure. Stanley McClover does an excellent job of driving all the way through. Sure, he might get, away, get rid of the ball. Don't stop your feet. It affects the throw. It's what I expect to see on Sundays now with this new rule. Go all the way through the quarterback. He can't follow through and he loses touch. Run through him, especially in the lower body. He was about raced the thigh high and it really disrupted the throw. 6.47 left. Auburn down by six. And Randy, I can't think, but that missed extra point on that first touchdown by Bo for LSU. That'd be a certain poetic justice, wouldn't it be, if somebody that benefited from three misses in the opener? 30-yard punt. Auburn, nice field position at the 40. Well, Monday on an all-new Late Show, for the first time ever, Dave goes one-on-one -on -one with presidential candidate John Kerry. You got to see that Monday. And then Tuesday, Dave's got Dr. Phil right here on CBS. What a week, huh? And a game undecided here in Auburn, Alabama. In minus three in the fourth quarter. Auburn's only had one run. They've kind of been, like we say, out of the box. They've sort of been uh, on their heels a bit. 6.37 remaining. This drive starts at the 41. Campbell, long ball. Man coverage, downfield, overthrows Aroma Shudu. Corey Webster, who's gone double duty today on both sides of the ball, tracking him, but Devin had a step. Yeah, so Corey Webster was was about two yards from being singed. He was beat on that play. Campbell just put a little bit too much air underneath the ball. Excellent job protection wise up front. But now a challenge. You're second and ten. You've got six minutes, six and a half minutes left to go in this ball game. Second and ten. You have got to get first downs here. Campbell 12 and 21 for 136 yards. Pitching out. Here comes Ronnie Brown. Breaks one, breaks two, breaks three, tackles. Still refuses to go down to the 39 of LSU. 20-yard gain for the Escalade. <laughs> Watch the job that line does up front. They get you the first five yards. Ronnie, the next umpteen are all you. Straight arm. Drive, cuts, power. Eight carries, 61 yards, end round, Ronnie Brown. That's that play I was talking about earlier. Yes. Greg. Cadillac right, Ronnie Brown back around left. Cameron Vaughn 
able to shut down the corner. And what looked to be at first a big game once Ronnie Brown with that 4-3-5 speed. If he got around the turn, watch out. It's, it's a very successful misdirection. It sets up other things for Al Borges in his offense. Keep moving. Keep the shifts. Keep the motion. Carnell Williams alone back on second down four. Long snap count by Campbell. Pressure, throws to the flat. Nearly picked off and then caught. Williams made the grab. How? I don't know. How did Corey Webster not catch that? His eyes look like, look like saucers. Stepping in front, hand strength of, of Carnell Williams takes that ball away from him. No other explanation. He's looking, while, while Webster's looking it in, Carnell Williams is grabbing it. Third down one, under five minutes left. Option, the keeper. Campbell and a first down for Auburn at the 26 yard line. You know, Craig, you, you can install a new offense, but when you get to the crunch time, everyone always reverts to what they do best. The boxers like that, or baseball players like that, or track athletes like that. And Al Borges knows enough to know running the ball is what they do best. And in crunch time, they've gone back to what they do. Williams and Trey Smith. The two backs in the Auburn backfield. Pitch out. There comes Carnell. Trying to get away from the grasp of LSU. Dropped at the 28. Corey Webster this time makes the play. Well, Corey Webster that time says, you know, Carnell, you're a lot bigger than the football. <laughs> I might have missed that interception. I got a full shirt though. I won't let I won't uh, I won't let your uh, jersey get away. I'll tell you both sides of the ball though. You're looking at some great defense. This Auburn defense has made some huge strides since last year. We knew LSU was good. This SEC has got some wonderful defenses. Second down, 12. Jason Campbell pumps once, twice. Runs out of the pocket, heads to the sideline, and then dumps it away. Good coverage downfield by LSU. That stops the clock, Randy Cross, with 3.13 left. Third down, 12. And we talk Tommy about, Tuberville. We talk about good defenses, too. How about in a couple weeks here on CBS when LSU goes into Athens and plays University of Georgia in that defense? I can't see where the defenses are going to play any better than they yeah. have today in this game, though. Tiger against the Bulldog. Both sides of this one. It's been all D and a lot of running. Shotgun backs are split. LSU showing blitz. They come strong. Pass. Knocked down incomplete. Intended for number two, Ben Obamanu. Obamanu was the intended receiver. Now Tuberville with a decision on fourth and 12. This is the outer limits field goal line. The utter outer limits, I think, for Auburn. So don't be surprised if they just decide to go for it right here. You still have three minutes to go. And a timeout. Auburn will think about it. Down six with just over three minutes left. LSU by six, 307 remaining. Tuberville on one side, Nick Saban on the other. Fourth down and 12. A game in the trenches, a game Randy Cross of two impressive defenses. And instead of a field goal try, and you're right, outer limits is correct. On fourth and 12, Auburn Anthony, will continue. Anthony Mix has been the money guy so far. Campbell rolling, takes a hard hit, throws, caught inside the 15. It's Courtney Taylor. Randy, they needed 12, they got 13. Just look at Jason Campbell. 
He knows he's going to get drilled. Stands in and completes this ball. A couple of nice routes, but Travis Daniels just doesn't get the chance to close on that route fast enough. First down for Auburn at the 15-yard line of LSU. LSU Tigers, two timeouts. Auburn, no timeouts remaining. They pitch it out. Here comes Cadillac and is tripped up. He'll lose a couple back to the 17. Nice pursuit by Kyle Williams. Well, I know Cadillac's your hood ornament for an auto reference, but the way Ronnie Brown's been running this ball, I'm not sure if I'd want to put the, hand, the ball in anybody else's hands. Then Ronnie Brown, the way he's been slamming it at Nick Saban's defense. Clock runs. 206, 205, second down, 13. No timeouts remaining for Auburn. This style of offense, the red zone is a huge time for the tight end. Cadillac's been held at just six yards this half. Play action. Campbell throws. It's caught. Fumbled. In and out of the hands of Anthony Mix. He caught it out of bounds. They're going to call that incomplete. Did not have control. Wow. Coming from the back, you want, I mean, that's a drill. Nick Saban during training camp, his defensive backs were doing that, and Prude does a nice job of causing that fumble. He had possession, the, the out of bounds and not having it all came in there with Daniels. Daniels got it out of bounds. Heads up play by Prude. So complete. A complete pass. And a fumble, a fumble out, of out of bounds. You know what, you go back to your point about Prude, about a drill, he's a senior. Been around a while. 11 plays on this drive. Third down and 12. Less than a minute and a half to go. Six point LSU lead. Campbell pumps to the end zone. Got it, touchdown! Courtney Taylor. And now, Randy, the ever important yeah. extra point. The season early on of extra point misses again comes into play for the LSU Tigers. John Vaughn never missed an extra point. 36 of 36. The kick is up. No! It was a bad snap. Yeah, low and inside on the snap. Had to put it down on a strange spot. There was a, a flag down on that play. Stunned silence in the stadium. Here's Steve Landis. Personal foul, number nine. That's the kind of penalty, if you're on the LSU sideline, that just rips your guts out. There's no other way to describe it. Bad snap inside. Vaughn tries to rush, tries to get to it, has to rush, ends up falling down. And in a golf vernacular, you'd say that was a dead yank. Wow. But you know what? That didn't happen. Can't trust our lion eyes. A penalty, half the distance, and another try. 190 straight for Auburn, 36 in a row for John Vaughn. Second life, another bad snap. Got it this time. Nick Saban wants to know what I do wrong. What we do? Well, I'll tell you right now, you missed your first shot on your extra point.
John Vaughn, the man of the minute, the man of the moment. Let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim. And Randy, it goes back after that bow touchdown. Godet misses the extra point. That's the separator right now with 114 left. LSU, two timeouts remaining. That, that personal foul on that missed extra point. Just amazing. Nick Saban stunned. Short kick. Xavier Carter. Dropped at the 11. Trey Smith with the special teams tackle. Let's go back and see Courtney Taylor. Here he is. Watch him right up the seam, right up the hash mark. That's a mistake by the LSU de defense, and the veteran quarterback, Campbell, is able to make him pay for it. Nice concentration by Taylor. And his first career touchdown at Auburn. Two timeouts for LSU, 107 on the clock. Jamarcus Russell, the redshirt freshman, will try to direct LSU downfield. 24-yard pickup, and let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. It's total yards. Auburn, 233, 143 since that opening quarter. Auburn's still in their base defense. This is not any kind of prevent. Get all your complete college football stats at CBSSportsLine.com. Russell sets and throws, sideline, dropped. Bo had it. The clock stopped with 46 ticks left, and two timeouts remain for LSU. Well, it's only fitting that this should come down to the, L the Auburn defense having to once again rise up. And in this situation, how big is it not having a Skylar Green on the field? Good point. That difference maker, that guy that can take it the, take it the distance every time he handles it. Jamarcus Russell, a freshman, playing in place of the senior. Randall, incomplete behind the outstretched arms of Corey Webster. So Webster again, not playing only on the corner, but also playing as a third or four wideout today. And he's also playing, you know he hasn't been throwing with the quarterbacks and running wide receiver the entire time. So that timing, that in sync is not there between, you know, Russell and Webster. Good example there. He ran us a little bit of a tight, a tight curl. Russell threw it to the other side. Oh, the sea of orange on their feet. Third down and 10, 39 seconds left. LSU down one, co-national champions of a year ago. Out of bounds, stops the clock. Craig Davis, Will Herring gave him a bump. You're about 23 yards, 23 yards from a long field goal. College football today, time permitting, coming up next. Twenty-three yards from Goodell, maybe getting a chance for retribution. Russell from the shotgun sprints out to his right. Looking, looking, has help, long ball, triple coverage, incomplete inside the 15. 22 ticks left. That's a young quarterback with an awful lot of faith in his guy. Because his guy is severely outnumbered. If you're going to throw it into that kind of a crowd, you want to throw it on high and on the outside where only your guy can get at it. Now Chris Jackson getting some warm-ups in. Still two timeouts remain for LSU. 22 seconds left. LSU, you see, with the third longest winning streak in Division One, with 10 in a row. Boise State on top at 13. Quick slant, complete, and reaching out to around the 43-yard line. And a timeout, yeah, called now by LSU. 13 seconds remain. And, and you're, you're, you've got 
another timeout left. You're 10 yards or 13 yards away from that field goal range you want. LSU, fourth-ranked co-national defending champions on the road at Auburn, down by one, but on the move with 16 seconds left, Randy Cross, one timeout remaining. Chris Jackson has warmed up on the sideline. He's kicked one today of 42 yards. Pick! Rose Green closes the door. There is a flag, I'm guessing excessive celebration. Right, Chris Jackson's long of his career was 47 yards. They wanted to get to the 30 yard line. That's exactly where Russell was trying to get that ball to when Rose Green stepped in front of him. Doucette. Let's force the line conduct. Gets the home team bid, 15 yard penalty. That's one you'll gladly take if you're Tommy Tuberville. And one thing, too, uh, if you're an LSU fan, it shows you the youth of this LSU offense. Only three seniors on the, on the, on the depth chart. Doucette, a freshman. Russell, a redshirt freshman, delivered the ball. On a knee. And Auburn will beat last year's co-defending national champ. And what a way to celebrate number 50, Tommy Tuberville, 3-0 on his birthday. If you're the Auburn Tigers, you're proud of your defense, you love your, love your running backs, this is an Auburn Tiger team win. No one person won this game. This entire squad was able to pull this one off. Let's go downstairs. Here's Dwayne Ballin. Coach Turberville, happy 50th birthday. What a victory. The poise of Jason Campbell and your defense came through. Well, they really did. You know, we just played field position the whole game. We knew we wouldn't score a lot of points. We just tried to play field position the whole night, and the guys played hard, and we made the plays at the end. What a win. If I told you that neither Williams or Brown would have 100 yards rushing, yet you would win, would you have believed this? Well, no, we're going to need to be able to run the ball, but I, this was a total team victory. This is a defensive victory. You give up nine points to these guys, you played a heck of a game. LSU is the reigning national champion. There's been so much talk about your situation here. What does this mean to you? Well, it means we won another game. I got another one next week, so we just take them one at a time, and I'm proud of our fans. What a great game, and again, it was a total team victory tonight. Happy birthday, Thank Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Greg? Tommy Tuberville, 3-0 on his 50th birthday. Auburn 10, LSU 9.